All right, guys, guess what arrived? Akel told me that the 10 was going to be making its way up here. I told you that the 10 was going to be making its way up here, and the 10 made its way up here. Um, I don't know how many 10s are in North America. I was led to believe that there's probably only one, maybe two. And uh, this is brand new, never been used. And they literally stuck this puppy on a boat earlier this year and shipped it over just so we can play with it. Well, that's pretty dang cool. Pretty cool, right, Frankles? A little bit. So, yeah. And all your guys are all on their phones taking pictures of the 10. <laughs> you don't know if you should be too. Okay. <laughs> okay, guy. Okay, guy. <laughs> okay, guy. Apparently, I think I'm wearing off. I'm wearing off on him. Guy doesn't know where his steering wheel is inside the cab, but you know. <laughs> okay, you guys. Look at these four. <laughs> Look at these four. Come on. Oh my word. You guys. Ideal 10 is uh, rocking the MAN engine, cranking out about 790 horsepower. The exact same engine, the exact same horsepower uh, that's in the Clause 8900. So that's its true competitor. Maybe the John Deere twin rotor, but uh, we don't know that. So the ideal is here wondering where its competitor is. And I'm not talking the 8900 Claws. Just saying. Well, let's do a little walk around, shall we? First, let's go look at the cab. This is my honeybee monitor. I got to get wired in. So that's the steering joystick. I see. Same cab, just, uh, yeah, this is a lot different, obviously. Oh, that's movable. That's actually good. That's better. Still got our cooler, nothing's changed. Okay, it is a little different without having a steering wheel here, though, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Makes it doing this very easy. Huh. Okay. That's the steering wheel. <laughs> or lack thereof. So this one is on tracks, as you can see. So we have two on tracks. We got the 9 and we got the 10. The tracks are rough. I'm not going to lie about that. I haven't really run the one with uh, tracks. I'm just going off of what uh, the operators tell me. Oh, that's a different door design. Something's different about that. This is longer, for one. And that opened really easily. Just saying. Otherwise, looks the same. No bigger belts that I can see. We'll look at the concave here. Ooh, definitely changed. So this is supposed to have a bigger cleaning area. I don't remember what percentage, but it's supposed to be bigger. That's what I'm told. They went back to a steel pan. And these are their new all crop concaves. They're not quite a wide bar, but they're not quite the small to kind of a split the difference. And ooh, I think I can get chickpeas through there. Might be tight though. 
I think they told me, did they tell me 14 millimeter? Is that right? I can't remember what they told me. They told me how wide this was. Then you can put your filler plates on here, so that's good, you can block them off. That's cool if I don't have to change concaves, as you saw in my other video. It's not the funnest thing in the world to do. This one doesn't have the auger extension. We might put it on. Um, the header that I'm getting, or supposed to be getting to trial, they're running into some issues with. So I don't know if we're gonna have that. It was supposed to be here at the beginning of the season and it's still not here yet. So whether it comes this season or not, we don't know. But you know what? We've been in good, con we've been in good communication and communication is key, guys. It's key. Been in good communication. Like the Ideal 10 was supposed to be here a few weeks ago as well, right? But we've been in dialogue, we've been tracking it, we've known where, exactly where it is, and so communication goes a long ways. Oh, we got double stackers. This thing must go through a ton of air, like Hokey Dyna. So the ideals only have one, and one. When I say ideal, I mean ideal nine. <laughs> Our nines only got one. This bad boy's got two. Otherwise, it looks the same. From looking at it, there's your gearboxes. I don't like this. I'd like this to be bigger, but I've already told them that. And yeah. So this thing does weigh a little bit more than the nines, even more than the nine tracked unit, just due to the bigger cleaning area that they put in. Let's open the shield. Oh, 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 it's gonna do it on its own. That's definitely different. That's definitely different. Otherwise, everything else looks the same up in here. Looks good, you guys. It's brand new, never been used. I'm not a fan of steel. I like to see cast. Like on the on the six and seven series John Deere combines, uh, they run cast. But on the but on their X9 twin rotor, they went back to steel. Dear, why would you do that? Why would you go back? To, why would you wreck what you, what was so good? <laughs> if it isn't broken, don't fix it. All right, what, I'm gonna get to work. Oh, good question, what am I actually gonna do? Well, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. This here flap, that rubber flap to keep all the chaff from going in and do a good spready spready, that will actually plug you up, so I'm gonna remove this. Not that, that. Got it? Got it. I know what works around here right now. I know what works, at least for us. Okay, gonna go. All right guys, so we got this, uh, this was a rubber thing removed. And all that was to do, as I told you, is gonna keep it in here, but they can over actually overload these. Okay. Um, what else? This is your rotor speed. It's this simple. Yeah, that's how simple it is. I do like that. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah, that's the updated shark fin. I think I've told you guys this has been an update uh, because these rotors were back feeding a little bit and catching stuff and so we put this divider in it. And it's been awesome. Haven't plugged in anything except chickpeas, so still trying to figure out why chickpeas and none of the other crops. Because you gotta remember chickpeas are only like that tall, right? Like they're really short. And we can go through green, 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 solid green lentils and not plug. So that's still under investigation. And when I say investigation, it is not by Echo, it is by Mike. And Mike doesn't mess around when he's investigating why he's plugging. Because I just get right on in there. I get right on in there. I'll wait for a tough day. Heck, I'll get climb right in this thing and tell him to go combining. I don't mess around. And let's check the weight. 
Can you see it? 24,400 kg. So that's like 53, 53, 53, 54,000 pounds, something like that. Now I can't remember what the nine weighed. I'd have to scroll back into my video. Otherwise, it's very similar, you guys. Very similar. It's got the same engine that the nines do. It's just has been bored out. So it's the same block and it's just been bored out. With probably a few extra features and so on and so forth and stuff like that. And um, yeah. But let's go put it in the field and let's see what she'll do. I guess before we go, we should probably uh, hook up. Honeybee brought over a uh, 50 foot for us to use. They're down here trying to help me get her hooked up. Yes, I know I don't have a steering wheel. Talk about when everybody's here learning how to. I, I've done this one time in a simulator in Germany. So, and in the simulator in Germany, I actually had to hook up a header. So, technically, this is my second try, and I think I nailed it. Pin stuck. He's just going to pry it out. Okay, sounds good. Pin stuck. Looks like we need a little bit of petrol. Okay. So while we're still uh, working on this, we're just running through a bunch of calibrations because this thing uh, needs to be fully calibrated. We're doing the bottom sieve, the chaffer, the concave. Um, basically everything on this thing has to be calibrated because that's the fuel that came when it came off the assembly plant. And uh, everything has to be calibrated and uh, like they really, like they rushed this thing to me. So, uh, which is awesome. That's awesome that they did that. So I, I know my way around this thing pretty well, so I'm going to start calibrating like a, like a banshee here. Hey guys, maiden voyage, put our, this comes up, comes down, I'm going to eat my fruit and uh, we're going to head to the field. We got most of our calibrations done to our knowledge, so we're going to go and give it a whirl and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, that time I'm going to drive between the lake. My first time driving the joystick steer. Oh gosh, Mike, don't screw this up, buddy. Well, we're almost to the field. Uh, we made it through the water, so barely. And uh, you gotta hold this thing very carefully. Let me tell you, it's quite sensitive. You gotta hold it low, so you got good support. You don't hold it like this. No, no, you don't do that. You will lose this thing. It's quite sensitive. Well, if you hold it like this, it's not gonna be a fun ride for you. Get it down here and just be careful with it, okay? Uh, anyway, we're still learning this combine. I like to learn with you guys, obviously. It hasn't cut nothing. The header is, uh, the header has seen a little bit of acres from a demo, but the combine's never seen anything. So, now that you guys know that we're running, it's quite a bit rougher, as you can hear, and these tracks are quite rough. Um, but I'm gonna conclude this video and we're gonna go cut into some chickpeas. So I'll catch you guys next time. Adios!